Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be talking about conflicts and what we can do to resolve them when they happen. Now, there are two common reasons why conflicts happen. One of them is avoidable and one of them isn't. The avoidable situation of conflicts is, let's say I have a repository that's at revision 101 and my working copy is at revision 100. I start working on a file without updating to revision 101, however, the file I'm working on is there's a modified version on the repository that's not on my working copy. This will give you a potential for a conflict and it's very easily avoidable if you, whenever you begin working on a file you first update so you make sure you have the latest working copy of a particular file. Now the other common reason why a conflict could happen which is unavoidable is let's say you have two people which which both of their working copies is updated to the latest revision on the repository but both people are working on the same file at the same time this is if they're working on the same location of a particular file a conflict is going to happen now first we're going to take a look at conflicts and how to resolve them through the command line so let's go ahead open up our command prompt and let's navigate to our command line one folder which is in users Ryan Zach desktop and command line one okay and let's go into our trunk and if we take a look in here we have our file one dot text now let's go ahead and open up this file in notepad and let's just put just gonna put a random word let's put goose gonna save that close and now we're going to commit these changes and we're going to pass it username user1 and password password1 and actually before we do this like I said previously it's always important that you do an SVN update now grant you we really don't need to do an SVN update because this is a local repository and only we have access to it so we know whether or not a change has been made but it's just good habit to always perform an update before you do a commit so that we can avoid that first situation of a conflict occurrences. So it's username user1 and password is password1. Okay, hit enter. We can just say updating file, close and save, and that's been committed and now let's navigate into our trunk folder in the command line 2 folder. So command line 2 trunk. Take a look at here. Now we have our file one dot text. Now I'm going to create a conflict by just opening up this file and modifying it. Now remember this is when you would really want to do an update first but because we want to simulate a conflict happening we're just going to go ahead and modify a file without actually updating it to the latest revision. I'm going to go ahead and put doc. Click save. Go ahead. I'm going to do my SVN commit. And when I do an SVN commit here, it's actually going to give me an error because I'm not at the latest version of that my my working copy isn't at the latest revision as the repository is. So my files are out of date. So go ahead, password 2, updating file, go ahead, close, and save. And this is when we get that conflict, and you can see right here, file trunk file1.txt is out of date. So what we need to do is we need to do an SVN update in order to be able to commit. However, when we do this update, because we were working on an out-of-date file, and the location of the file the location of the file that we changed was the same location as what was modified on the the newer revision on the repository we're going to get that conflict so I do this you notice conflict discovered in file one dot text it gives you a couple of different options that you can perform all we're going to do is we're just going to hit P for postpone and that's going to allow su um, subversion to create three different files three, di three additional files for us so hit P it, it says updated to revision 4 and the summary of the conflicts, text conflicts 1. So now if we take a look at what's inside our 
trunk folder in command line 2, we're going to notice we're going to have that file.txt, but we're also going to have three additional files. Hit enter. And as you can see, we have our file.txt, but we also have a, a file1.txt. We also have a file1.txt.mine, a file1.txt.r3, and then a file1.txt.r4. And basically, what these three additional files are, are files that we can use in order to to uh, resolve our conflict by diffing different versions of the file. Now the .mine file is the version of the file that you created, so this is going to be that one with the dash doc. Now the .r3, that's the version of the file that you modified. Since we were at revision 3 when we started modifying our file, that's why we have the r3 file. And then the r4 is the version of the file that we had a conflict with. Generally, that's going to be the latest revision, and obviously, it's R4 as our latest revision, and that's where the conflict happened. Now, there are, a few, there are a few different ways we can resolve this issue. One of the ways is by taking one of these three new files that Subversion created for us and renaming it to file1.txt and then committing the changes, if any. So, let's say we wanted to go ahead and discard what what the other user did, which is in revision 4, and we want to just commit the changes that we made. We would then go ahead, delete the file1.txt, and then the file1.txt revision 3, revision 4, r3, r4, and then we would rename file1.txt.mine to file1.txt and commit that change. And that will resolve that issue and just push our changes onto the repository. Now let's say we want to discard our changes and just use what the other person did. In that case we would want to delete file1.txt, file1.txt.mine, which is our changes, and then the file1.txt.r3, which is the changes that we made, which is the file we made the changes to. And then we would rename file1.txt.r4 to file1.txt, and we'd actually be done at that point. And the reason we'd be done is because the the that particular file is 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 what's on the repository so and because we're already updated to revision 4 as you can see we did update to revision 4 our file would be matching with the repository we could also go ahead and delete our changes and the changes the other person did and just revert back to revision 3 which was the file that that we made our changes to and that the other person made their changes to and you might want to do this is that if for whatever reason you don't know which changes you want to commit but you want to make sure the file is still in a working state we know revision 3 was the previous version that both developers used to modify we can just revert to that by deleting my changes which is the dot mine file the latest re the latest revision file and then the original file that had the conflict happen now the second way we can resolve this conflict which is the way we're going to be going through is actually diffing the two files. We can go ahead, let's go ahead into our command line 2 folder and go to trunk. If we open up the file1.txt, you're going to notice we have this file has both the file1 updated duck and the file1 updated goose. So this file is going to have both versions of the file and where the conflict occurred. It occurred at this line, so that's why it has what I did and then it has what they did, which is the .r4. It lets you know which which changes belong to which file. So what I can go ahead, I can do that. I can close that file, and if I wanted to compare my changes with the other person's changes, this is when we're going to be using WinMerge. I can go ahead, select the mine. I can hold Control, select R4, right click, and I can open up WinMerge. And when I open up WinMerge, you notice that it, it shows me file one dot updated. It's showing me that goose and duck are different. As you can see, they are highlighted a little bit differently. They're a little bit lighter than the rest of the line. So what I could do is I could go ahead and say, I mean, in this case, it's a, it's a pretty, pretty simple conflict that's happening where I want to keep mine. All I would have to do is I could close this. Let's go back to command line. I could go ahead and erase the files that I don't want, which is the file1.txt and then the revision files because I want to keep my version of the file and just overwrite whatever the other person did. So that be dot text dot r3 and then 
file1.txt.r4. Go ahead. And then I would want to go ahead and rename the file1.mine to file1.txt. You can take a look at our directory. We notice we now just have the file1.txt. And if I go ahead, I can do another SVN update as we want to do that to make sure that there weren't any other changes that happened during us trying to resolve this conflict up to revision 4 and then we do svn commit pass it username of user1 up oh, user2 as we're in the user2 folder and then password of password2 that looks good go ahead resolved conflict close that save and you notice now that it committed successfully so if we were to go ahead and go back into our command line one trunk if we now go ahead and take a look at that file it should be the file with duck instead of goose Oh, well, actually, we first have to update. And we've successfully updated that file. U stands that the file was updated. And we go ahead and open up this file in Notepad. And we have the version with doc. So while this is a pretty basic example of a conflict and resolving a conflict, the process is pretty much the same exact thing, whether or not it's one line that was different or it's a thousand lines that was different. It's just the amount of time that's needed to put in to actually resolve in the conflicts, as if there's more conflicts there, you're going to have to go through the file longer in order to make sure that whichever conflicts happen, that you, re you resolve them properly. Then we're going to go ahead, close out a command line, and close this out. Now we're briefly going to go over how to do this with Tortoise SVN. And pretty much, it's the same exact process as with the command line, except when we're committing and updating, we're doing it through Tortoise SVN. If I go ahead, go into my trunk, go into the files, and I go ahead and just do moose. Save that. Let's go ahead and commit. No, we don't want any of that. We can just say, well, actually, we can use updating. Nope. Let's just do updating files. You've got that one file we're updating. Click OK. Gonna authenticate myself as user one as I'm in the tortoise one folder. Password one. Click OK. That's been saved and it's been committed. So now we can go ahead and go to tortoise two. Go ahead and we're gonna just modify this file without updating just so we have that conflict that's going to occur. We have doc. Go ahead, save that, close this out. And now when I try to do a commit, which, remember, we should always be updating before we commit anything. I'm going to go ahead, say updating files. Click OK. It's going to ask me for my authentication again. You've got password to, user to. And you notice how it said commit failed. This one is out of date, and it tells you, please try to, please try you, you have to update your working copy first. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to do update and it shows that a conflict happened. And as you can see, those three same files were created as what happened when we postponed when the conflict happened through command line. So what we're going to do is again we want to we want to have my changes overwrite what the other person did. So we can go ahead and click on these three files and we can delete them and then we can go ahead rename this file and it's asking if we want to change the the extension which we do you notice how this file now has that ex that red exclamation mark telling you that this file is different from the version that our working copy is at which is at revision 4 if I go ahead and commit go to recent messages double click on that so now we don't have to type that every time we're updating files click OK and it's user 2 password 2 click OK and it successfully committed the change so we can go ahead and close this out again go into our tortoise 1 let's go ahead and update 
It's updated that file, and we should have the duck version. And there it is, file one, updated duck. So that goes over what needs to happen when you have a conflict. You basically just have to go through the different versions of the file that you want to that you want to diff, and then just choose which changes from each file that you want to have be committed to the repository and just rename that file so that it matches the same name as the file that is being currently stored in the repository. Thanks.